first step on the road to personal success is defining what's important. Write it out on the fridge, the wall, the desktop. and Keep a copy in your wallet for emergencies. However, most of us sadly have never even asked the question and as a result we make all the wrong decisions. We go to the wrong school, study the wrong major, work the wrong job, marry the wrong spouse, buy the wrong house, make the wrong investments and choose the wrong friends to eulogize at our funerals. Most eventual answers are vague and banal. I want money, I want happiness. But these things are not important. Money is merely a means of getting what's important and happy is how you feel when you've got it. Family, friends, adventure, power, artistic expression, spirituality, career, peace of mind, health, freedom, security, love, etc, etc, etc. Every person, of course, has a different set of priorities and that's why the world is so diverse and ripe for trade. When you are clear about what's important, you can avoid a lot of stress because it's much easier to make decisions that don't knack you afterwards. Like cholesterol, some types of stress are good and some types of stress are bad. Good stress happens when the deadline is looming and you need to get important things done. Bad stress happens when you have unimportant things to do to a looming deadline. These deadlines can either kill you or make you stronger. One type of stress smooths the path and takes the edge off of future problems. The other type of stress deflates you, leaves you depressed and depleted of energy. Another word for bad stress is distraction. Rushing to do things that don't add value. You are running around the building, putting out fires that don't exist, and all you have at the end of the day is slippery floors and foaming clients. Your ladder is up against someone else's wall. When you are not clear about what's important, you are doomed to walk in the wasteland between reaction and distraction, distraction and reaction, never knowing which fires to quench and which to keep alight. The best way to avoid this nightmare life is to stay proactive, i.e. do things that are important but not urgent. Go to the gym, save for retirement, call your grandmother on her birthday, learn a new language, take up art classes. At work, plan for problems, improve workplace communication, keep your team focused on the goal and mission, develop the strengths of the individual team members. This is simple, but not easy. It's not easy because there is no sense of urgency. The little voice in your head is always pulling you into the distraction zone, telling you you have lots of time. To be proactive means to go against the run of nature, i.e. to do only those things you need to do now. It's hard to save for retirement because you can't imagine being old. It's hard to exercise when the weather is cold. It's hard to do research where there are so many good programs on television. It's hard to say no when people ask you to go out. Proactive people also have this voice, but they have learned to shut it down. They have learned to remain productive and positive by controlling their thoughts. They see their lives as projects and assume full responsibility for all outcomes. If something goes wrong, they don't blame others, but look for the answer inside themselves. They hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And they have memorized quotes from Stoic philosophers like Marcus Aurelius. Every morning when you leave your house, expect to meet the busybody, the ungrateful, the arrogant, the deceitful, and the unsocial. The Roman Emperor went on to say that most of our anger, frustration, and stress comes from our unrealistic expectations that we should only be people that are agreeable to us at all times, and that things should happen according to our wishes. There are a lot of downsides to the global economy of consumer capitalism industrial pollution, the wealth gap, commoditization of precious human values. However, the one great achievement is that it gives people the belief that they can make something of their lives. The central idea behind being proactive is that you are responsible for everything that happens in your life. You decide when to be happy and when to be sad. Happiness and sadness are decisions. The opposite of proactive is reactive. When it rains, you are sad. When the sun shines, you are happy. The proactive person decides how he or she is going to respond to a given situation. Imagine you are in a taxi stuck in traffic. 
The reactive person will get angry and curse the traffic and even attack the taxi driver. The proactive person will welcome the traffic jam um, because he knows he can't do anything about it. Developing a proactive mindset is therefore essential paradigm for being a good manager. For more information on empowering your workforce, please go to my website. Thank you.